Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 24. In this tutorial we are going to complete our UI bar, so the little blue thing at the bottom, get all that finished, and we're also going to build up to the end of the level with some more textures. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series, and indeed everything on game development on my channel. With that in mind, Let's get to work. So since our last tutorial, I have built a little bit more of uh, this floor, as they're called in Wolfenstein, as you can see. A couple of enemies around, uh, a couple more health bits, some more bits and bobs here, there and everywhere. Um, so I have left one little section of this game uh, incomplete, and that's just through here, because we're going to have the end of our level here. Obviously your levels or floors, whatever you want to call them, are going to be much bigger than mine. Mine's only to illustrate what we do and how we can build this up. So for now, let's focus on our UI. So let's head to our canvas and we are going to deal with uh, something very simple and something a little bit more complicated. So currently the only thing missing from this is the floor number and the little face in the middle which kind of dictates our current health status. So let's start with the uh, floor. Now obviously anyone that has played the original uh, Wolfenstein 3D knows how all of this works. Um, so realistically every time we go to a new floor we have, um, well it, it's down here isn't it, and we accumulate a score, we do whatever we need to do. So I'm just going to use this score panel right here, hold control, press D, duplicate it and I'm going to move it across to about here and decrease it in size to about there and let's rename this to floor panel and let's set this score label to floor label and this one to floor level. So by default this is going to be 1, simply because obviously this is going to be floor 1, so we don't really need to do anything more with this. So let's change this to floor. And it's as simple as that. So every time we have a, a new floor or a new scene as it were, we just need to change that. It, there's no point writing code for it because the it, you're writing something when there's no real need to, there's no necessity to do so, so we may as well just keep it as it is. So the next thing, which is going to be a little bit trickier, is indeed this little face here. And I know it's not quite center, uh, but you guys would obviously need to make that center if indeed you want it to be that way. You refine it in the way you want it to be. So generally what we're going to go with is a panel again. So I'm going to take the health panel. Uh, I'll probably move it across just a little bit. Hold control, press D to duplicate, and let's bring it to there. And I'm going to get rid of the health value, uh, both of them, and just keep that panel. Rename it to face panel. And the way this works basically is depending on your health value, it displays a normal face, slightly bloodied face, a very bloodied face, and a very, very bloodied face. Uh, that's just generally how it works. So we've got like po four possibilities. Um, I'm not really an artist so I can't create these faces but there is going to be a reason for what we do uh, in just a moment so you'll soon understand. So in face panel let's right click and let's add in UI and let's go raw image. I guess it doesn't really matter too much and obviously you'd be able to use an actual face image here. Um, you can probably source them somewhere, um, I haven't really had the time but the same principle will apply of swapping images around. So I'm going to change the colour of this to just, um, let's guess, some kind of skin tone like that. Uh, in fact, we should probably set it uh, as a, a red one, maybe. There we go. So we'll have that. And I'm going to shrink this down just a little bit to about there, a bit centre. So this one is going to be, uh, let's rename it to 100 HP. 
Control, press D and rename this to 75 HP. So we're basing this on the percentage. So 100%, 75%, 50% and 25%. Less than 25% obviously would be the same one. Um, so let's change the color of that to a deeper red, I guess, because we can. Control, press D and this will be 50 HP. And I can't stress enough, th this is where you really have to shine and source your own assets for this. And I'm pretty sure there are going to be assets out there. But it, like I say, it will make sense um, soon enough. So a very bloodied face there. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of 25, 50 and 75 because we don't need them right now. Uh, but we're basing our initial face on the 100%, but we do need to write a code to be able to determine which one we should be displaying. So let's go to our scripts folder, uh, stats, and we'll do this in global health. So let's open up our global health script in Visual Studio. So we're going to be modifying this and we're going to add in four variables for the uh, health that we've got right there. So it won't take too long to create the extra lines of code but the whole idea of it like I say is being able to know when to swap um, certain images of the bloodied face in and out obviously um, we are using that raw image just because we, it is images there's nothing we can do really within unity not without complicated code for no reason once again to uh, do it so we do it with four separate images so as this is loading up we're gonna add in uh, those four variables. So let's add in public game object and we'll call this uh, HP 100 semicolon and then public game object HP, I don't know why I put that capital P, I'm really not sure, 75 and same again for 50 game object hp50 semicolon and finally public game object and hp25 semicolon so this is all going to be done inside the uh, void update because we need it to monitor whenever we take health get hit various different things start a level all that kind of stuff so we still need to have it starting at 100 which is completely fine so inside the void update Let's now have an if statement. So we need to say if, and in brackets, the health value is greater than um, 75, then we do the following. We need to say hp 100setactive true, so it turns it on. And I'm gonna copy that line of code place it below and change it to HP 75 and have it as false. Same again, copy that line of code down and just change it to 50 and 25. Now it's worth stating at this point that yes, I know this is not 100% the best way of doing things. However, this style of game that we're creating here, we're not going over the top. So we're never going to really use too many resources. So having this constantly monitor is not going to make an impact at all. The only way it would make an impact is if you're trying to monitor a million things at once and trying to update a million things at once. Then obviously you would suffer some um, delay, some lag, whatever you want to call it. But for now, this doesn't really matter at all. Um, so I'm going to copy that if statement below and have this if health is below. 25 um, then we will have everything set as false except HP 25 so those two are the easiest to create it is the middle two that we have to add a little bit of extra code in to determine what we should be displaying so if we take this go here if health value is greater than 25 in fact we may change this so less than 25 is fine. So if health value is greater than 25 or equal to 25 and, which is a double ampersand, health value is less than 50, then 
everything is false except HP 50. So we turn that one on. So we've got an and statement here. So we're saying if our health value is 25 or more and the health value is less than 50, then we display that one. So the same principle applies to creating the health value between 50 and 75. So if health value is greater than or equal to 50 and health value is less than 75, then we say this one is true and this one is false. Now currently what will happen is because this one is set to greater than 75 and that one is set to less than 75, if our health is equal to 75, the script won't quite know what to do. It won't make too much of a difference, but it's also worth covering all bases. So in this case, we'll say if health value is greater than or equal to 75, and here we'll say if health value is less than 25. Yes, thank you, Avast. I will restart you after this tutorial. Stupid thing interrupting me. So yes, we should be fine at this point now. So I'm going to save that script, head back into Unity. And if I can remember where the script actually was, once it's finished compiling, uh, I can't remember. Let's type in health. Where is it? I cannot remember. OK, so we've got our global health somewhere. Where did I put it? It was a while ago we did it, and I can't remember where I put it. See now this, there we are. Global container, we have a special place for it as well. That's my fault. I'm going to move that to the top actually. Let's rearrange our hierarchy. So my hierarchy is quite messy. Um, I'm naturally that way unfortunately. <laughs> I really should tidy it up. Uh, but you should try and keep it as tidy as possible. So 100 HP and then 75, 50, and 25 and I'm going to save my project and now I'm actually going to bring in a couple of textures one uh, the textures mainly for the end but there's also a little extra something which I think adds a bit of comedic value to all of this uh, so I'm going to bring these into unity and as you can see one of them is a face not exactly the best looking face but uh, it's just something I've sourced from um, Google I don't know why I've just changed it to a normal map I did want to change it to a normal map I want to change it to a sprite. So you can probably find this somewhere on um, Google if you want to. Obviously, I don't think I'll be able to redistribute this simply because it's, it's, it's from a Google search. Just search for face silhouette and sure you'll be able to find it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is on face panel, I'm going to right click UI and go to image and just add that face onto the image and just shrink it. So this is my face it looks fantastic <laughs> okay so and resave that there and i did bring in that gray door those two gray doors and they will be available on the website for you to download if you want to uh, i'm going to press play now and there's my cool face there so our ui is complete down there. so let's just check out what happens hopefully we should see the face change we do we should see it change again. Now. Yep. Yeah. And we should see it once again now. There we go. And hopefully we die. Respawn. There we go. That took a bit of time, didn't it? And there we go. Our face is back to normal. So we have our UI pretty much complete now. Like I say, if you're dealing with the face thing altogether, the same principle would apply. So, the final thing to do in this tutorial is quickly build up our finishing area because the uh, next tutorial is where we're going to finish this level up and then start moving on to more um, complete features, I think we could call them. When I say complete features, I mean kind of like you have a level end screen. Um, so yeah, all I'm going to do at this point is just quickly piece together uh, a little section where we can finish our level up. So I'm going to have this block over here and this here. 
and bring it to there maybe one more so this section here where the block currently is is where our end is going to be um what i might actually do is kind of cheat a little bit and just drag that onto there do that and if uh, you've noticed it's pretty much the same as this so we can cleverly already use the normal map that already exists for the green panel so let's do that let's drag and drop onto normal map right there and i'm gonna do the same again that whoops uh drag it onto there perfect uh, do the floor a little bit further so obviously we all know uh well i'm hoping we know that the end section of wolfenstein 3d is just a little bit different it's kind of like uh like a a metal kind of panel thing i guess could, could we really say that maybe i don't know okay so like i say all i've done here is just build this together and i'm just using this texture as the end level so that will be where we go out but i guess you could always, always use the door maybe change the color of it i don't know i haven't tried that hmm, okay i'm gonna do that to be honest i'm gonna have that as the end you could source your own materials if you want to but that's going to be the end of my uh, floor as it were so next time what we're going to do is we are going to implement uh, the section here, which ends our game, or well, I say game, more ends our level, floor, whatever you want to call it. I think we need to determine what it should really be called. I keep calling it all kinds of things. So, yeah, what I think you should do, guys, is between now and the next tutorial, which will be coming very soon, very soon indeed, uh, is just build up the rest of your level. It can be as big or as small as you want it to be. Obviously, this is your game. There is no right or wrong in how you do any of this. Um, but I do think you need to kind of work on what you've got, build it, build it how you want it to be. It is your game at the end of the day, not mine. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.